esteemed students, it's a pleasure meeting you once again. We are going to look at SOP 105 Introduction to Psychology. We've already done the introduction on what social psychology is all about during the first contact. Today we are going to look at a different topic. We are going to look at the concept of learning. What do we understand by learning in psychology? Learning is a common thing that always people believe that, okay, when we said learning, it's something that we just learned in a class or we learned a new thing or it's something that we just look at it in a class or it's, just, it's not just about learning something in a class. But in psychology, when we said learning, we mean something that is profiting, something that is gainful, something that an individual can be able to understand and recall it no matter how long it stays for a longer period of time. If you are able to, to learn something in psychology, it means that you can be able to utilize that thing to solve a particular problem. And that is why in psychology, it must be profiting, it must be gainful, it must last long in an individual. And that is more than learning something or something new in a classroom. And that is why psychologists looked at the concept of learning as an important uh, organ in, in, in psychology. Because it is only through learning that people get to know so many things and new things and be able to utilize those things that they have learned to solve a particular problem. And that is why it must be profiting in psychology and it also must be gainful. And it must also be something that stays long in an individual so that no matter how long it stays, an individual can be able to recall it and make use of it to solve a problem. And that is why psychologists defined learning as a relatively permanent change in behavior as a result of prior experience. Why is it relatively permanent change in behavior as a result of prior experience? It is a relatively permanent because it has to stay long in an individual. So that no matter how long it stays, an individual can be able to recall what he learned in the past to solve a particular problem. And that is why we can only understand the person that learns something by the way he behaves, by, the way that by, the, by, by his actions, and the changes in the behavior of such an individual. The changes can occur as a result of when you are trying to solve a particular problem, you change a new thing, you bring in new ideas, you bring in something that can profit the society. The so people will say, oh, that person has learned something because he can be able to utilize what he has learned to solve a particular problem in the society. And that is what psychologists believe to be learning. So many people believe that there are so many things that people can learn in the society to make an individual utilize it to solve a particular problem in the society. And that was why psychologists were able to classify different forms of learning that people can use and utilize to solve a particular problem in the society. For example, we have the classical conditioning learning, we have the operant conditioning learning, we have the cognitive learning, and we also have the computer-assisted learning. These are the four forms of learning that an individual can be able to understand and learn and solve a particular problem in the society. Let's look at the, the classical conditioning form of learning. For example, in classical conditioning, psychologists believe that an organism tends to learn that or learns that two things tend to go together. Two, not one. Two things tend to go together. A Russian Nobel Prize winner, Ivan Pavlo, he makes use of a dog. What did he do with the dog? He took the dog to a quiet harness laboratory and operated on that dog, exposing the salivary gland of the dog. What did he do with the dog? Pavlov's aim was to discover what caused saliva to flow. He rerouted the salivary ducts to the outside of his dog's cheek so that he could collect and measure the spittle. Perhaps, he thought, the production of saliva might be the result of a fixed nervous reflex, like a knee jerk. After taking many measurements of spittle, he confirmed that the dogs drooled automatically when their tongues touched food. He called the response the salivation reflex. But his work started to run into trouble. As his dogs became familiar with the experimental routine, they started to fill their cheek tubes 
before Pavlov had a chance to stimulate their tongues. The dogs were learning to anticipate food. Pavlov tried a new technique. He erected screens so that the dogs couldn't see what was going on. Before passing meat through the hatch, he introduced a stimulus that was totally unrelated to feeding. A ticking metronome. At first, the dog dripped saliva into its cheek tube only when the food appeared. But after a number of trials, the dog began to connect the ticking with the arrival of meat. Soon, the sound alone made the dog drool. Eventually, the dog salivated as much to the ticking itself as it did originally to the presentation of food. It is to that. Hmm? He called this new response the conditioned reflex. Whatever the stimulus, his dogs could soon be conditioned to produce saliva. And that shows that because the, 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 the something is classical, everything is done by the experimenter. It was even Pavlov himself that operated the dog, brought him into the laboratory. It was also even Pavlov that put the ball in front of the dog. It was also Ivan Pavlov that presented the food for the dog to eat. It was also Ivan Pavlov that on the light for the dog to see the food to, to begin to salivate. That shows that classically everything is done to the dog by the experimenter. People, psychologists, criticize this form of learning in the sense that it is always the experimenter that does most of the things. It is classically spelled out. It means that the person that is benefiting from the form of learning is not showing anything. It's not benefiting from anything. It is the experimenter that does almost everything. But mind you, the dog learned how to associate two things. What were the two things? Presentation of the food and the owning of the light. So if you take that dog to anywhere, not necessarily that quiet harness laboratory, once the light is on, the dog will begin to salivate, believing that the food will be presented for him to eat. So that is how classically it is. So that dog now, the dog now learns how to associate the owning of the light and the presentation of the food. And that is how two things tend to go together. Another form of learning that is also important is operant conditioning. In operant conditioning, unlike classical conditioning, an organism learns that an action it takes leads to a particular consequences. What do I mean by that? When we operate, it means that there must be an outcome. And that is why it's operant. Somebody has to operate. And so also, the experimenter of the operant condition in B.F. Skinner, what did he do? He makes use of a rat. Because we believe that, just like I said, it's not possible to take human being into a laboratory and make experiments. In operant conditioning, an organism learns that any action it takes, it leads to a particular consequences. The experimenter B.F. Skinner gets a box. He makes use of a rat. He operated under the, he make a hole that is directly beneath the box and put that rat inside the box. It was an empty box. The box was named after him, the experimenter, the Skinner's box. He put the rat inside the box, make a protruding hole directly beneath the box, and he put the belt that was directly touching the ground. And on the ground, there was a pellet of food. The rat was going inside the box, inside the box, inside the box, accidentally, unconditionally, without his consent, he presses, he comes to the middle of the box and presses the bar that was directly touching the ground. And under the ground there was a pellet of food. The moment he touches the bar that was directly touching the ground, a pellet of food comes into the box and the rat sees that, hey, something is there. And we were told that the rate at which the rat kept on pressing the bar 
because it was profiting. The food was coming up for him to eat. It increases spontaneously and uncontrollably. It shows that the rat had to operate. The operation is the pressing of the bar. If you had not pressed the bar, the food will not come up for him to eat. At the beginning, he was just going around the box without getting anything. It was just a, a, a mere going around the box without any gain, without any profit. But the moment accidentally, even though it was accidentally, the moment he comes to the middle of the box and presses the bar that was directly touching the ground, the food came up for him to eat. And that rate at which the pressing of the bar increases was uncontrollably. Because it was what? Because it was profiting. Because it was gainful. It was gainful to the rat because he was able to quench his hunger. He was able to get something to eat. It was gainful also to the experimenter because he was able to teach the rat how to fend for himself. Another form of learning that is acceptable in psychology is the cognitive form of learning. The cognitive form of learning is said to be the most complex form of learning in psychology. Why is it complex? Because it involves thinking and rethinking and arrangement of situations to solve a particular problem. It is also complex because it involves the use of human beings, not animals. And it is believed that it can only, it is only human beings that can think and rethink. Animals don't, they only perceive, but they don't think, think and rethink. So human beings have to think and rethink and arrange situations to solve a particular problem. And that is why that form of learning, which is cognitive, is more complex and is more, it's not easy like other forms of learning. Who was the experimenter of cognitive form of learning? <coughs> Wolfgang Kohler. Wolfgang Kohler makes use of the most intelligent chimpanzee among all the chimpanzees. Because we believe that when we're looking at genealogy, genealogy of humans, we said it started from the Neanderthal man. The Neanderthal man are the big apes. The big apes like the chimpanzee, the gorilla, the baboos, the orangutans. Human family started from that angle. So among these big apes that brings the genealogy of humanity, chimpanzee was considered to be the most intelligent. And the particular chimpanzee that Wolfgang Kohler makes use, he makes use of was Sultan. What did you do with the chimpanzee? He put that chimpanzee inside a cage. Outside the cage, there was an object. Let's, take the, let's look at the object to be a banana. We know how monkeys and chimpanzees are with banana. That object was kept outside. Very close to the, to, to the fence, there was a short stick. And some few meters from the fence, there was a long stick. The chimpanzee was going around the cage, looking at the object that was outside. That object may likely be banana. He was looking at that object. How do I get that object? How do I get that object? He was thinking and rethinking and arranging situations on how to get the object. Going around the cage. He now went and tore the cage, stretched out his hand to get the object. He couldn't. He went back and paused, thinking and rethinking how to arrange situations to solve his particular problem that was the object outside. Immediately, he started a short stick that was kept outside, some few meters away from the cage. He quickly, we were told that the moment he started the short stick, his consecutive hole comes back to him because he believes that he can be able to solve his problem of getting the object outside. He now went straight to stretch out his hand to get the short object. Trying to block what was outside, he couldn't get it because the stick was short. He went back again, paused, thinking and rethinking, arranging the situations available at his disposal so that he can solve his problem. His problem was getting the object that was kept outside. He quickly cited one another, the, the, the other long stick that was kept meters away from the short stick. He uses his hand to stretch to get the long stick he couldn't. He now think of the short stick. He went to carry the short stick, stretch out the short stick to get the long stick. He was able to get the long stick and got his object that was outside. And that was why it was the most complex form of learning in psychology. Why? Because I said it involves thinking and rethinking and arrangement of situations at the disposal of the individual to be able to solve a particular problem. We've seen if that chimpanzee was not intelligent enough like human, he wouldn't have even think of tearing the cage. It was more profiting in psychology than any other form of learning. Because it involves 
the arrangement of situations at one's disposal to be able to solve a particular problem. And that is why when we are defining learning, we said in the first place, it must be what? Permanent. It must be profiting. It must be gainful. It must be used to solve a particular problem. The problem of Wolfgang Kohler is to make sure that the chimpanzee or the, 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 the person, the, the, the chimpanzee, learns how to fend for himself, which is getting the object that was kept outside. The problem of B.F. Skinner is to make sure that the rat will learn how to fend for himself, which was quenching his hunger by pressing the bar for the food to come it come up for him to eat. The problem of uh, Ivan Pavlov was to see whether the dog can be able to associate things, two things, and that was exactly what they were able to solve. Because Ivan Pavlov, at the end of the day, he sees that he teaches the dog how to associate two things, which was the owning of the light and the presentation of the food. Once that dog is taken to anywhere, once he sees light, even if the food is not presented, he will believe that food is there, he will begin to salivate. And once that rat is taken to anywhere, not necessarily in his master's box, he will believe that, oh, let me go to the middle of the box and press, food will come up for me to eat. And that chimpanzee, once we keep him in that cage, not in any cage, not necessarily his master's cage, he will begin to pause and say, just keep the short and the long stick for me, I can be able to solve my problem. So no matter how long it stays on these animals, they can be able to solve their problems. And that is what is referred to as learning. It must be profiting. The recent people, the recent psychologists, think of computer-assisted learning. We learn so many things through the use of computer. There are so many crises and problems surrounding the world, which I said in the beginning, why we are even studying psychology, because we believe that human beings are the major, are the major problem of the society. Because they are the ones creating the problem and they must be used to solve the problem. And that is why as a result of these numerous problems, psychologists themselves classify themselves into various disciplines so that they can be able to apply their, their, their knowledge of psychology in relevant situations. So we believe that problems arise across the globe and people make use of so many tactics and ways to solve these particular problems. And which we, if we understand in that particular area where the problems are, where problems lingered, we may not be able to understand what they use to solve their own problem. So there is the need for us to enter into computer through internet. So many things are now being posted through the use of Google's internet, Facebook, and so on and so forth. People have learned so many things there to see how a particular problem that was lingering in a particular area across the, in, in, across, in the world was able to be solved because of that aspect. So when you go through the computer, when you go through the computer, you find a lot of information. And this is also a form of learning that psychologists recognize it, which is a recent form of learning. Common language that everybody said. I learned something. What is it that you learned? Were you able to utilize what you learned to solve a problem? If you don't do that, it means you have not learned something as far as psychologists are concerned. You, can be, you should be able to learn something and to stay long in you and to be able to utilize what you learn to solve a particular problem, no matter how long it stays in you. If you think of, okay, that was what was used 10 years or 20 years ago. Let me utilize it in present to see if I can be able to solve a particular problem. When you do it and that problem is solved, psychologists believe that you've learned something. So at the end of the day, it is important for psychology students to understand what learning is all about in psychology and to be able to classify different forms of learning given by psychologists, which is the classical conditioning, the operant conditioning, uh, the cognitive learning, and the computer-assisted learning. Let me give you a question. When we said, not all changes can be explained as learning in psychology discussed,